Greetings and welcome fellow YouTubers out there. Today we're going to be talking about the EU Article 13, Will It Destroy the Internet? Fallout 76, Floor Plan, Mega Dimensional VIIR and Apex Construct. All that coming up on this week's Weekly Update. Hi, kind of, first up I do kind of want to um, apologise for the flurry of uh, adverts that I've been putting on my uh, channel. But, I mean, the adverts that I'm putting up are more or less just um, PSVR style advert uh, games of games that I find that look interesting, things that I might want to download, things that I might want to play. I mean, as you can see from Thursday nights when I did uh, Apex Construct right before we did Apex Construct. Yeah. So I am going to be trying to continue putting on some ad adverts on this channel, but those will mostly be adverts for games that I think are interesting and hopefully might get a little bit more traffic this way. And I'm sure I would love a little bit more traffic. <laughs> right, okay. Uh, first, first up, I want to talk about, about a bit about... I want to... Wah, <coughs> Try that again. Hmm. Uh, first up, I want to uh, talk a little bit about the EU article that's just come up. Okay, the first thing that I want to talk about is the EU article 13. On the 20th of June, the EU will be voting on what's called article 13. Now, if this article 13 passes, it will basically effectively destroy the internet as we know it is today. It will stop us from being able to use links unless you pay a tax or, yeah, I'm not joking about that. There will be a tax on links as well as getting rid of free uh, of fair use policy. Now, I mean, fair use policy as, as it is when we create things like our top 10 video or do a news report on um, a review on a particular game that we like or a film that we've seen. We use little bit, little clips of those films just to show what we're talking about. That will be all gone. You won't be able to upload content that you do not solely own. Uh, this is going to be a problem. I mean, one of my favourite YouTube channels is Cinema Sins, and they get a lot of stuff done for there. They get a lot. They they get a lot of subscribers. They do a lot of good stuff on there, dinging everything that they find wrong and showing you what they're talking about. But we, all their videos will be deleted. They would all be gone if this vote passes, because you will not be allowed to use any other content out there. That is not your own. And this basically kind of pushes the information media uh, into the hands of the big corporations and take it out of ours. So the so uh, our social media platform will not be able to use this. We will not be able to report on things that we've seen. We will not, will not be able to show clips. We will not be able to even link to our external sources. Uh, and this is going to be a big problem and it will effectively change the way we we use the internet today cuz just imagine that you are right you're writing out your own little blog or video post and you say oh this people are like great check out their website no you can't because that link won't, uh, you'll need to pay a little fine to the people upstairs to put that link down on your web page it does sound a little bit fishy and uh, yeah i mean Spain uh, tried this law out, uh, I think, round about 2014. And when Spain implemented this law, Google turned off its Spanish area access, meaning that they wasn't, they didn't use, they didn't want to pay for uh, the licensing of using links in Spain. So they basically turned that site off. No one can access to it. 
I don't know if it's back on or if you now can find links to stuff inside Spain, but if that imposing this sort of law was shut down Google, one of the main giants in that area, and just imagine what would happen when it, all of Europe goes down. So we want to stop this. We want to delete Article 13. So hashtag delete Art 13 or save our, uh, save our internet eu. I'll put a link to those down in the descriptions. So you might as well click on that whilst you still can, whilst we still can put links into our descriptions. Because if this goes through, we won't be able to. Okay, uh, next up, um, so, sorry about that, we just needed to get that uh, sorted out because I do want that, um, uh, Just I just wanted to raise awareness of that and if you can raise awareness to other people, please, please do so. Okay, next up, Fallout 76. As some of you guys know, earlier on in the week, we ha uh, Bethesda did a 12-hour li uh, live stream of actually showing nothing. But at one point, they uh, they released a teaser trailer for us to see. Uh, a teaser trailer for their new up and coming, up and coming, up and up and coming Fallout 76. Now, no one knows really what Fallout 76 is uh, going to be. The internet is rife with speculation, rumour, gossip, possible leaks. It's has been told by this person who is the godsend of all, uh, of all leaks because all, they're totally reliable. And I say, hold on a bit. Brakes. Pop the brakes up. All that we have had so far is this teaser trailer. And by means, this teaser trailer has got a lot of information in it. And there have been, as you may have seen, there's uh, a few ch sites out there that have broken it down and dissected every single bit of this trailer um, over and over again and come up with their own unique uh, ideas or point of view from it. Okay, let's talk about what we know of Fault 76. From the law, L-O-R-E, Vault 76 is one of 17 controlled vaults. Now a control vault is basically a vault that is used as a template for all the other vaults. As you guys may or may not know, majority of the vaults out there um, are designed for scientific experimentation on humans. Some sublime, some not so sublime, and as I said, the control vaults are supposed to be dictated as the uh, template of hum what humans are in a natural environment whilst natural environment whilst uh, trapped underground during a nuclear holocaust. <laughs> so, Vault 76 is supposed to have no uh, scientific experiment run on them. Also, in the law, it is part of the DC region. Now, from the uh, video, the advert that we saw, we hear the song uh, West Virginia. Now, West Virginia and DC are two completely different things, but they are neighbouring. Uh, they are neighbouring the borders. Uh, right at the um, top right-hand corner, I believe, is where the West Virginia would meet the Washington DC. And I think that is going to be where this game is going to be placed. Another thing about these control vaults is that they are supposed to uh, open up their doors about 20 years after the bombs have fallen. I don't know if that's going to be safe or not, but 20 years after the bombs had fallen, but 20 years after the bombs have fallen, pots that well before any of the other um, any of the other events like Fallout 1, 2, 3, 4. Um, all previous fallouts, this seems to be before then. Well, that's when this vault was supposed to happen. However, the date on the actual um, Pip-Boy that you see at the beginning of the advert uh, shows it to be actually five years after the day that the doors were open. So I'm thinking these are pretty much a good clue as to what to expect here. Now, as you can see, when, when the um, 
trailer pans through the vault you've got this massive reclamation day sign posters celebrations you were invited to the replicate rep, replication the the reclamation day you were invited to this grand day uh, and you can see parties and balloons and uh, all sorts of things as as the uh, as the trailer progresses through uh, so you're thinking this reclamation day is supposed to be this grand grandiose thing oh i get the idea this is my my train of thought that 20 years after the foot the bombs fell everyone piled into the, the vault and then the doors shut got locked shut and tight 20 years afterwards it, to the day is when the doors are reopened and the people the 500 people that are in there are let out out into the open but as i said this is uh but i think our protagonist missed that for some reason I don't know, maybe I uh, had like a, a five-year hangover. Maybe the party from the previous night was so much for him that he slept in and kept, the, kept pressing the snooze button for the next five years. I, I don't know. There may have been something that happened to him to make him miss the next, next, five, uh, next five years. And so when he wakes up, he wakes up to this massive empty vault everyone's gone everyone's left because reclamation day the days of the door the days the door opens and the day that people go out into the world and try to repopulate it or rebuild it uh, rebuild the world they've gone out and you are left inside the vault for five years so that's my fault so far for the beginning of this uh online there are lots of hints uh suggestions that this might be an online only multiplayer game or this may be a, a base building game so you've just got the vault and you're building building it up as a base these are just speculations i don't i don't really honestly know if it's going to be an online only we hope not we do not want an online only or an MMORPG style game because that's not what we come to expect from um, uh, from Bethesda from these type of games and we was told um, by tweets don't worry about it don't worry about the online action you will not be disappointed those were the words you will not be disappointed and I'm getting the I'm getting the impression here that Fallout 76 isn't Fallout 5. Fallout 76 is to Fallout 4 what Fallout New Vegas is was to Fallout 3. So we had Fallout 3, Fallout New Vegas, Fallout 4, Fallout 76. So I think we're going along those sort of lines. It's going to be in the same sort of um, uh style yeah you say the same sort of style but more or less uh, in a previous era in the timeline now when it comes to the timeline here these are other things that we're going to expect what what else are we expecting now we're looking at the early almost the earliest stage in fallout timeline history uh, so far, as far as I'm aware, I don't think any other fallouts have gone to this, uh, gone to this early in its development. So, in round about the time that is mentioned, uh, that is mentioned on the Pit Boy, this is before the days of super mutants. So, I don't think there will be any super mutants out there. There won't be super mutants. But it is around about the same time that the master is said to have started his reign, his experimentations. So I don't know, maybe we'll find that this, um, this particular game will start focusing on that 
aspects of discovering the master and working around some of these operations, some of these experiments, uh, and see the actual creation, the genesis that is the super mutant race. I don't know, it might be what, that might be what uh, we're going to be aiming at. Not the, not the wasteland after, after everything's all built up, um, but the creation of the wasteland, the creation of the raiders. Let's see how people start, um, how the super mutants are created, the first ghouls that are come out, that start making their appearance. See how people react. Uh, to 20, just 20 years after nuclear de devastation this is the new world that we are growing and coming to know as the fallout universe so that's how i perceive what fallout 76 is going to be and to be perfectly honest i am kind of excited uh, and very much looking forward to this it may not be the fallout 5 that we're expecting as i said it's going to be fallout 76 which is to fall out for what fall out New Vegas is to fall out free. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so that so either which way, Fallout 76 is definitely going to be one that I'm going to be buying when it comes out. I'll even put it, uh, I'll even start playing it on my Twitch stream so you guys can see it. I might even put it up here on my YouTube channel, even though that it's not a, um, a VR title. Or, well, if it is, I will still be looking forward to it. <laughs> if it I will, I'll still be putting it up. Okay, um, next up, floor plan. Yes, this was quite a busy week this week. Uh, so I've got a couple of extras that I put in there as well. So I've got floor, uh, floor plan. Uh, I only just did a kind of a little walkthrough. It took me a couple of hours to go through. And I say walk through, it's more or less me trying to figure out the puzzles and sneakily looking at the internet at one point. But um, yeah, it's a, what do I think of floor plan? It's a cheap old game. Uh, it's not really, it's an experience rather than a game. A little puzzler allows you to try and think uh, how you, how to go about uh, solving the situations in front of you. It doesn't explain what you need to do. In fact, even the hints doesn't explain what you need to do. It just hints at a certain thing. So, I mean, one point that I really got stuck at, uh, I really didn't know how to pa uh, get past it. And I found out that the uh, solution was something that I would not even consider until I actually saw it online. <laughs> Yes, like I said, unfortunately, that was the one time I had to use uh, another person's walkthrough just to actually uh, find it, uh, figure out how to proceed. But the rest of it is pretty much straightforward. You just go forward, back, up, down, just take things from one area and see what you, what they can be used on, on other areas. And there are some times where you have to think outside the box. So, I mean, it was a nice little short experience. Um... Not one that I would highly recommend. I mean, it is not like um, not what I would consider one of my proper games. If you're only after that, if you're asking for something that's uh, like a fun and fanciful one, that would take up a couple of uh, couple of hours just trying to figure out the puzzle. And sure, fine, go for it. Um, but it's not one that I would really recommend, though. Okay, next up we have a very, what is it, what's it called? Yeah, this was kind of an expensive one for me to try out. It's, this game isn't actually on the PlayStation VR store, but it does have integrated VR components. I would like to try and see if I can find somewhere where I can get a list of all VR integrated games that are not noted on the VR store. So I think that would be quite cool. Um, this game, Mega Dimensional VIR Neptune. What can I talk, say about this game? This game is... It's a lot of fan service. It is very JRPG style. It's a JRPG style game. 
uh, is very highly fo focused on these cute, uh, cute, sexy women goddesses in anime art style that don't know how to dress properly. And yet these are supposed to be, as I said, goddesses the, who have these supreme powers and fight people and... Uh, and not doing a pretty good job of it considering they were invaded and the city's under destruction by these evil people and it's a JRPG game. Now the there is a small uh, VR element into it. The VR element is basically just sitting, sitting inside a room and watch a VR video of you meeting some of these people. Uh, sometimes they like to get up in your face and there's no real interactivity with it. It's not summer, it's not summer lesson. Yeah, it's not a, uh, well, I actually started call it a waifu simulator. Um, which in kind of, uh, considering the fact it was VR and it was just, it was just like a VR video as I said. You got several videos that you play then it was just one after another and it was a little bit cringe worthy to be honest but I'm sure sometimes people will like that I'm sure it'll be very popular up in Japan but to be perfectly honest I think the actual RPG style of, uh, game was a little bit more better on its own <laughs> for the price tag do I recommend it no it is too expensive at the moment uh, and I certainly got buyer's remorse after, get, after getting it. Uh, so I strongly recommend not getting it unless you... Definitely not for the VR, because there's um, the VR isn't that interesting at all. Maybe if you want to try another RPG style game, uh, that's stro RPG stroke story text. You know where you like reading... Um, like Do Doki Doki Literature Club, you know, where you're like reading text after text after text. It's, apart from the creepiness factor of Doki Doki Literature Club, it is pretty, it's that sort of style where you go and you read lots and lots and lots of text. There's flash some nudity in front of you just to uh, give you that fan service, as they call, as I call it. And then you go off, start fighting monsters again in JRPG style. Cool. All in standard 2D, not the 3D. Okay, let's go for the final one. And finally, we have Apex Construct. Now, this game I really didn't want to try at the beginning because I started having problems with um, with, bow, uh, with bow and arrow games. How, which is a shame because I really do like the way bow and arrow feels and plays out of like hold, holding one end like drawing out pulling, pulling out now when you're doing it to the sides it's side side onto the camera it's it's okay because when you're like doing it like that the you, the camera can see you but when you're doing it head onto the camera the your front arm or the arm that's closest to the camera blocks your second arm so therefore you can't aim at the camera you can't um, re really work properly because it just glitches out all the time this is one of the reasons why we need full room scalability for bow and arrows to work properly so i end up playing the game when i know i know where the camera is in real world i kind of orient myself to the camera uh, so whilst I was in in game, I ended up turning to the side, and basically sidestepping all the way to the left, uh, so, uh, turning to the left whilst trying to uh, do anything like walk forward. I'm walking forward to the left, except for, but yeah, I guess we're supposed to do that. Okay, the game itself, the game itself is pretty much a, a decent, de decent enough game, and. I found myself quite enjoying it. I've got the first part out and I will be playing uh, more on my Twitch channel uh, to download and copy the uh, other parts of the rest of the games as that goes along. Now the, um, yeah, it has its ups and downs. I like the story, 
but computer interfaces I don't like. Now, the computer interface is like you're playing on a DOS text screen. Now, that's fine if I actually have a keyboard in front of me to type, but I found myself typing out like D, I, R, enter, and then it like comes up with a list of all the files, and I say O, P, well, actually, to be perfectly honest, it was more like this. O, T, no, no, P, no, damn it, press the right blinking button, stop shaking all over the place. <laughs> yeah, it, the, the con con computer interfaces, I like the idea of typing, uh, of typing in DOS commands because I know DOS. Uh, I use DOS commands with, um, in my youth but it didn't work in a virtual reality game where your fingers are juggling all over and you kept on entering in the wrong buttons every time uh, which as I said was kind of annoying so I wish they would change the interface to do more or less a selection on the screen which would have been a little bit better but there you go that was the downside of it however I did like as I said the gameplay the story the monsters were quite good the Graphics were a little bit stylized um, for my liking. I mean, I prefer the more realistic style, but this was more stylized. I got the sense of feel that I was in a contained area, that this was definitely in a program and there was nothing beyond what you could see. So I pull it a down for the graphics, but up for the archery style, up for the shooting style. Uh, I still need to try and figure out how am I supposed to find um, where I'm supposed to put all my trophies and hidden stuff because I found a cabinet where I'm supposed to lo load up stuff. Um, yeah, I think my inventory is going to be a little bit restrictive for a while. But yeah, I mean, it was a quite a decent interactive game and I certainly recommend it. I mean, I give it like a, a six or a seven, maybe. Um, it, it is a good game. Um, for me, giving a 6 or a 7 and saying it's a good game shows you how uh, how great a game needs to be before it gets a higher mark or a proper higher mark. But yeah, I mean, if it's down in price, I certainly recommend going out to get that one. As long as you try and aim on, uh, don't forget to aim sideways at the camera, otherwise you'll lose your arrows. <laughs> but cool. Now... I think that's it for this week. I do hope you've enjoyed watching this as much as I've enjoyed creating this. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. And I'll see you guys out there.